Can't hear you. Can you get closer to the microphone? Maybe you're pulling towards you. I don't know. Is that better? I can't. I'm in the odd space. So I'll repeat myself. So my name is Maureen Mueller. I live at 441 980 Road. I live um, less than. I'm not sure even how many feet from it. I've endured all kinds of interesting and fun things in the 15 years that I've lived in Cecil. I've had blasting companies um, come in with a timber run plan, which was really exciting when I had a one-month-old baby. And that caused a bit of a landslide on 980 when they put the water lines in. It's great fun. Um, but I'll be honest, when I came to the first meetings about Mark West, and I was here for the PowerPoint presentation. It's very hard as a consumer and as a citizen coming to these meetings because I don't I hear so much hearsay and back and forth that he said, she said. We don't keep very good meeting minutes, so I can't point to something that Elizabeth Cowden mentioned at a meeting back in the day before she was a member. You know, I can't point to these things. <coughs> and don't have very clear rules about business ethics and conflicts of interest and who should be allowed to be on the board if they have certain business interests in other areas that might be construed or might somehow affect their abilities to vote. So what do I do to bring, what data points do I bring to a meeting? What sources? I can bring in material safety data sheets. Um, to tell you about all these wonderful chemicals. I can bring the articles from the Observer Reporter saying that their compression station down in Houston, you know, they've been fined already $150,000 just this year for the flares they've sent up from these compression stations. That Mark West has admitted in their own proposal before this board that they do not know how to build these things in residential areas. They themselves said at their meeting, but again, you know, I can't, this is now hearsay again because we don't have very good minute notes, that they are used to building these things in like West Texas where people don't live. They don't have residents around, so they don't know what other information they have to provide. So they come into this. And, you know, so you have to start looking at other areas. So you look into Mark West, and you look into their SEC filings, where they have to put out all these different things that the company goes through. They're a public company. You have to publicly admit all these things. And so, you know, you start digging, and you find out, well, they were involved. One of their uh, pipelines was involved in an explosion in a town called Ivel, Kentucky, which I mentioned to you guys back in, you know, when they, when Mark West was still here. Like, what do we do? To, I mean, because clearly there's two factions, right? What, how do we help you, whether it's on the legal side, whether it's on, you know, what, what do we do? Like, how do we make it safe? This is, you know, it's one more thing we've had to endure. Like, when I moved to Cecil back in 1999, I thought this was the greatest place in sliced bread. It was quiet, it was green, it was beautiful, and then one thing after another. You know, at what point do I, what do we do? You know, now I have to deal with cancer, and when I see those trains with the 1075 placard on them, my kids' soccer field at the school, like, back in the day, I used to volunteer for my ambulance service, and I know from my hazmat training, that is too bloody close to any residential structure. The horse farm, the church, God forbid if something were to happen. I've grown up, like, I've seen natural gas. Yeah. You do not want these kinds of things to happen. You never want to have to tell a family member or have to treat a burn patient. You know, this is, you think that this is such a remote possibility, and maybe statistically speaking it is, but you know what? This stuff does happen. And it's horrifying. You would never wish this upon anybody. So to willingly bring all of this onto ourselves, why, why would we do this? You know, how do we how do we help you then? You know, so I suppose that's my question to the board. Without hear he say she say, without hearsay, without being dramatic, how do we help you? You know, one way or the other. If you're for or against, what do we do? Or is this all we can do? I think what we do tonight is we look like our suggestions, our solicitor suggested. 
go ahead and appeal it and then find out what the court says. And John did make a good point earlier that the fact is, if the court does say to put it in there, then there are some conditions that you can put on. But the only way you'll be able to do that is if you do appeal it and move forward with it. That, that again, came up with what you were saying about the conditions. When we talk about the condition, my concern is on remand. Typically, the court would send it down and say, zoning hearing board, can, it's an essential service, and now move forward with your hearing. And you can put conditions. The conditions come from the evidentiary hearing, not from our ordinance. The ordinance is our ordinance, the other laws. And that's, that's a big concern for me, because if you read through the proposed um, conditions that the board had, We, we had a laundry list, including electric compressors, um, my hair monitoring. There was all kind of, all five supervisors voted to, you know, back then, there's some weren't on the board, voted to put all these conditions in place. Um, and it goes on and on. I, I think there's there's 37 conditions that if the zoning hearing board would have approved it, that the board asked them to put the conditions on. The remand seems to suggest that that's not going to be possible. And that's inconsistent with every other remand that I've seen before because the, again, conditions come from the evidentiary hearing that was established. The board decide what fits, not not looking at our ordinance. So that, that was one of my big concerns about even right or wrong, putting aside whether you agree with the court or not, the, the gymnastics coming back down have to be addressed. I mean, what, what's the board going to do? This board has a, a constitutional obligation to make sure your air is protected. And my concern is that are we upholding our constitutional obligation when we can't even condition approval to mitigate some of the potential issues. With, they may, there may be no issues, but at the hearing, that just didn't come out. So we are now, we're at the mercy of... Well, and, and any appeal is discretionary. Like I said before, the full Commonwealth Court does not have to take the appeal, neither does the Supreme Court. So all you're doing is asking the court, will you review this issue? If they say yes, yes, and let the court decide the, the issue. If they say no, then, then we are back to the zoning hearing board. And John, by the way, what are the percentages of, of uh, appeals that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court hears? The Supreme Court hears. I, I think it was nine percent. I was going to say ten. So I'll give you the point. All right. It's, it might not even be that high for the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Um, the Commonwealth Court on Bonk. I look at Mr. Kamen over there. I'm not sure what the number is. I mean, they have an on Bonk courtroom, so they obviously hear a good bit. We just got nine judges. Yeah, that's maybe third. Seven judges, um, all nine vote, about 30% maybe. Then, but with, with that is what's interesting in this case is this Mark West case was used by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in deciding to overturn the state law because what the court used it for, as we argued to them, is you have to look at this and tailor it to local conditions. You cannot regulate an industry on a statewide average. And what Mark West didn't do in that hearing, what the court didn't do, is address that issue in its opinion. They didn't understand that the author of the opinion was a dissenter in our Act 13 case. She voted against um, against Cecil before when we tried to overturn the law. She was on the dissenting side. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, I'd like to address the board here. Thanks for all your time tonight. Um, my name is Bob Mikulski, 27 Glass Hill Road. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Sean Bakovinsky and the police for helping out the, helping out the fall festival there uh, in order to get our signs down this year. Thank you, Sean. Uh, second of all, um, I have nothing uh, to gain so far as the, uh, the gas wells. I have, I, have, I have no monetary interest in it. And my family still, most of my family still lives here in Cecil Township for the last 35 years. I have grandkids, granddaughters, and daughters and son-in-laws here. So I am also very concerned with the health and the possible problems here that go on. But what I hear tonight with so many of you people out here that I've never seen most of you before, and all of a sudden you've been concerned problems here that we're not focusing on. The first problem I see is we don't care about the school buses on Bob Bender's Road. We're worried that he's going to have a nice road for his customers to get to his shop. We don't care about our school, school buses going over the hill. That's okay. But we're not looking at the bigger picture. Every one of you here, I bet you drove here in a car tonight, didn't you? Yeah. 
Did anyone walk? Did you anyone just take a horse or buggy? Or did you just all drive? What did you use in your car? Gas? Now, when you turn the lights on, like this, the, the, I think it was Mike that said earlier, when you turn your lights on, most of this is coming from natural gas today. We're all, everybody here is concerned and, and, and scared to a point with the possibilities of the problems that we have. But instead of worrying about pro bono and we're going to fight this and win this, we should be more concerned from the very beginning that we know that this is something that's coming. It's going to come through here. It has to, it has to be allowed to come through here. And right now, um, Mr. Smith, we're not dealing with our country. We almost shouldn't get our liquid fuels and everything else that we get from our comprehensive plan. Is that not right, Cindy? Because we don't have an R2 that will accommodate this. So we should, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, an I2. We don't have an I2 that will accommodate this. So really, we should give all that money back. I, I mean, technically, I mean, technically, because we don't have a comprehensive plan in place. And I do agree with you, Cindy, we should have a new comprehensive plan. I don't care if it costs $100,000 or not. It should be updated. The other thing that you're forgetting about, though, and I'm not picking on you, Cindy, so don't, I'm not, or Jason, I know a lot of you guys here are from Timber Run, but like the girl came up here and stated earlier, when they were putting Timber Run in, and they had the mud all over the road, and the landslides, and they were blasting, and they were waking up, that, I don't even know who the lady was, but they were waking up her young baby, that was so you had a place for you to live. So everybody here had to take that chance and that danger so that we can move forward, progress moving forward. Not that it was done in a an unprofessional way or uh, a, a way that was deemed unsafe, but we do have a lot of issues. It's a growing community, we have a lot of issues, and, and instead of us fighting every little thing tooth and nail, we should be looking ahead to find out what we need to do to work with Mark West Industry. We should already have the zoning in place, we should have had an I-2, so they didn't just buy that property, somebody advised them that that was the proper property to buy. You know, to buy. I, Andy, and I don't know, I wasn't here, so I'm not saying it was you, I'm not saying it was Frank or Elizabeth, or, I don't know who it was. I wasn't Kwame, on the board, Bob. But <laughs> I wasn't on the board. What, 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 I'm, what I'm getting at, and I'll, and I'll be down here in a second, what, what, what I'm getting at is there's all kinds of things that go on every day in our township that, that is unsafe. The, 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 the thing that we, like I said, we're all using lights, we're all using gas in our stoves, in our vehicles. We, we, we need to look at this realistically. And, and, and move forward. Nobody wants it in their backyard. I understand that. I didn't like when, when I had a railroad that came through once a month when I moved in here 35 years ago. And it came through at 10 mile an hour, and I was good with that. But now I have people running up and down the Montour Trail all the time. Frank, you know, if they there visit you guys the one day out here in my front yard. But that's okay. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at, Frank, what I'm getting at is we, we, we fought it over court because we couldn't reach a decision. You had to put a fence up. You promised me you'd cut the grass every couple weeks. You didn't cut the grass for the last five years since we did this. But that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I cut it every, I cut it every week. But where, where, where I'm going with this is when I moved in here, there was two dump trucks that our township had down here because this was a public works station up here behind the where the magistrates moved up. There was two dump trucks here. And now there's, they, they, when they put the dog kennels in, they hot and bark all night. They're down there moving the dumpsters, the plows are up all night, you know, banging and dumping. I don't care. It's, 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 you, you have to be realistic. We're not all living here in a, in, you know, you, 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 I don't know a better way to say it, but we all need to grow some, some here so we can move forward. You can't, you can't be like this. We're, we're, we're all here for the same thing. We all have families. We all care about our township. I think most of us care about each other, but we're going about it in the wrong way. Thank you. Thank you. I just need to address uh, 